What is up? I'm your host, Endo Kane, and I'm here to let you know that I just finished watching Smack It Down. So enough of the bullshit, man. Yes, I'm back in the crib. It's enough of the bullshit. Time to get back to reviews. Let's get it. Hey, right, Smack Down kicks off with a recap of AJ knocking Cody Block off last week with his fake ass retirement. Then we cut to Cody out in the parking lot, seemingly waiting on AJ Styles to arrive. And man, he looked real pissed. I would be too. Then we are in the ring with the bloodline, headed by the leader of the bloodline, Solo Sokoa. Wise man says, until Roman returns, Solo sits at the head of the table. I love it. The wise man also says that this is a double anointment and that Tama Tonga is now Tama Tonga, the new right hand man. Infamous Tonga Loa. Solo tells wise man, thank the Tongans for saving his skin last week from KO, which he does. Wise man says KO has been looking for the bloodline all day since he got there early at the arena. That's when KO appears out of nowhere and takes the entire bloodline in the ring on by his damn self, but he gets outnumbered. That's when the street profits appear, even the numbers out. After a few chair shots from KO, they stand tall and take the ring. Back to Cody Rhodes, he's still in the parking lot waiting for AJ. Come back from commercial, and we see Solo telling the wise man to go all this and make this a six man tag match tonight. The Bloodline versus KO and the Street Profits. And we cut back to the ring. We got our first match tonight. First bit of action. We got Jay Cargill and Bianca Belair, the women's tag champs versus Indy Hartwell and Candice LeRae. Let's go. She firing Don and Baszler and Stark appear ringside to check this match out as soon as it kicks off. Shoulder tackle, suplex combo by Belair, then a moonsault. LeRae grabs the ponytail of Belair to get the hot tag to Hartwell. Great tag team chemistry from LeRae and Hartwell. Back from the break, Jay gets the hot tag, and she flying all around the ring, man. She over here, she over there. Backbreaker splashed by Jay, picks up LeRae and throws her in the Indy Hartwell. Crazy tag finisher from the tag champs. Uno dos tres. The tag champs pick up a pretty impressive win on SmackDown. Immediately following the match, Fire and Dawn and Baszler and Stark take out the tag champs almost like they had this shit planned. And then they bang and take each other out they sales. That's when the tag champs fight back and take over the ring. Double finishes to make a statement within the women's tag division that we run this shit and I want motherfuckers to try it. Cut back to Cody. This nigga's still in the parking lot. That's when all this appears and tells Cody, look, man, I can't have you and AJ fighting. You know what I mean? People going to get hurt. And that kind of pissed Cody off. He like, people going to get hurt. People going to get hurt regardless. This is what the fuck we do. And after what the fuck he did, I ain't letting this shit slide. Talking to Apollo Crews backstage. He having an interview. Didn't really get much out when Angel and the Gato Del Fantasma attack this man, jump him, stomp him, take his ass completely the fuck out. They gotta walk him to the trainer's room. All this and the reps are there to kind of break it up. And that's when LA Knight appears to talk to all this, like, we're local fall. Oh, that's right. This nigga had a Texas contest, and I'm here working, doing shit the way it's supposed to be done. That's when Carlamelo Hayes appears as LA Knight talked too much, especially about somebody that's not here. That's when all this says, fuck it, Apollo Crews just got took out. Shit, I need a match. How about LA Knight versus Carmelo Hayes tonight? And we cut back to the ring. We Gargano, Johnny Gargano, representing DIY, and he is taking on Grayson Waller, representing A Town down under. Let's go. Right, this match started out pretty damn physical, way more physical than I thought. Corner chops from Gargano early. This man's chops are lethal. Backbreaker by Waller. A weird sliced bread deuce by Gargano outside on the ring. Belly to back suplex by Waller. Canadian destroyer counter by Gargano. It's amazing. Gargano suicide dive outside, but hits Theory instead. I don't know if Waller pulled him into it or whatever. Waller throws Gargano into the ring post, steps back in the ring, 
hits the finisher. One, two, three. Waller wins. Theory is pissed low key because he kind of feels like he was the sacrificial lamb for Waller in the second week in a row. The second week in a row, we seeing cracks within a town down under. All right, so we cut back to Cody. This man's still in the damn parking lot. I mean, he's welcomed with security by all this. And he pretty much just says he got off the phone with AJ Styles. And AJ about to pull up, and that security is only precautionary. So that's when AJ Styles actually pulls up. But security gets in the way. And the good brothers get in the way. Trying to stop all of this shit. Like, hold up, hold up, hold up. Let me get in the goddamn arena. That's when Cody, we get a follow shot. Cody walks all the way to the ring. Picks up a mic and says, get your ass out here right now. We do this with no security. When AJ and the good brothers appear. But security getting in between them. Like, hold up, hold up. Y'all ain't gonna do this shit right here. And AJ says he want a match for the WWE title at Clash. Other cast, Cody obliges, you know, pretty much says that, but at Cash of the Castle, if you want to do this, I'm going to make you say the two words that your bitch ass should have said last week, which is, I quit. They look at all this, and all this gives the thumbs up for the match. I quit match at class of the castle. That's when Cody gets out the ring, like, fuck this, I'm going for him right now. Knocks out some security guards, you know what I mean? That's when he's being held back by the security. AJ jumps over all the security guards and delivers a phenomenal forearm straight to this man's face. Knocks Cody out. He walking like a newborn lamb. It's amazing, looking good, loving how this is going so far. Bianca and Jay come out of all this office to say that they just talked to him saying they trying to step it up. They want a triple threat tag match for the tag titles at Clash of the Castle. Jade and Belair, we got Fire and Dawn, and we got Baszler and Stark. Okay, back to the ring. Time for more action right now. That's why we got L.A. Knight, yeah, taking on him, Carmelo Hayes. Right now, L.A. Knight with a huge clothesline to kick it off. Now he's dribbling Hayes' face off the table. Back body drop on Hayes on the announce table by Knight. Carmelo Hayes jumping off the middle rope like a goddamn cat. Face buster by Hayes. Pop up, power slam, elbow combo by Knight. Carmelo Hayes looks to pull the tight, but that's when the momentum and gravity shift by L.A. Knight. You know, Joe Strace. L.A. Knight picks up the hard fought win. I thought this was pretty good to end it like this. You know what I mean? It keeps L.A. Knight going, and it, and it's a controversial loss for uh, Carmelo Hayes. So this is this is pretty good. I like the way they ended this. After the match, L.A. Knight calls out Logan Paul, pretty much tells him, get your ass back here because I need that U.S. title. Backstage, Tiffany Stratton offers the tag with the queen of the ring, Nia Jax. That's when Mi Chen or Mia Yim or whatever the hell her name is, splashes ice water in Nia Jax's face. And that's when they start squabbling, had to be separated. Me Chen talking about keep AJ Styles' name out your mouth. We show some clips of Piper Nevin taking out Bailey for the past couple weeks on SmackDown. That's when we get Champ herself, Bailey, out to the ring. All right, so Bailey don't really even say much. That's when Chelsea Green, annoying ass, and Piper Niven appear. They pretty much say Bailey been losing, 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 losing so much. It's only natural that a class of the castle, Bailey will lose to Piper. Bailey says she respects Piper so much that she didn't need to jump her for weeks for a title match. All she had to do was add and that she will beat her in front of her hometown fans in her hometown. Piper says that Bailey knows nothing about her at all or her journey that she's been putting on Scottish wrestling since the beginning, putting on Scottish wrestling on the map that she walked through the WWE doors as a world champ. That's when we get a video reaction package Whatever from Logan Paul saying the LA Knight is no real challenger to his title. He calls him a mid carder, which I kind of fucking laughed at because it's like <laughs> you're literally the mid card champ. I thought that was kind of ironic. Then we cut back to the ring. Time for your main event. We got KO Kevin Owens making his way to the ring. Marching is Kevin Owens in the Street Profits versus the Bloodline. Let's go. But before we do that, we see Chelsea Green and Naomi arguing outside of Aldis's office. Getting ready to get into it. And Aldis says, look, man, I had a long night. Please don't fight. Just I will schedule y'all for a match next week. Then we back in the ring. We got the bloodline out. Ready for action. Ready for blood. Match start. Dawkins 
starting this match, big elbows, take out Tomatonga with a splash in between. Tomatonga shoulder tackles to Montez in the corner. Power slam by Tonga Loa. Solo blind tag to get involved. Pulls Montez out of the ring for a quick beating right before the commercial. Samoan drop on Montez forward by Solo. Sliding close lines from Tomatonga. He's really good at those. Montez makes the hot tag to KO. KO stomping a mud hole on Solo, a cannonball, and then a swan time combo, one, two, kick out. Thought up by KO, but the Tongas break up the pin. Montez is high flying on the outside to take the whole group out. That's when Solo hits Montez with a chair on the outside to DQ the match to end all of this shit. Solo gets ready with the spike, but that's when he has the Thomas Tongas old Montez up for a Spears just like how Roman would. Choke this nigga KO out, right? Then they pick him up, put him power bomb, shield style, right through the goddamn announce table. And the bloodline stands tall to end SmackDown. I love it! And that was your SmackDown review. Hope you checked out that episode. We are slowly building and placing rocks in place for Clash at the Castle. Make sure you check out our reviews and interviews with some really cool guests I got coming this week coming up. Make sure you check out our Raw review on Tuesday, and I will see y'all then. I love it!